Wukong is the monkey man that everyone hates to play against. He runs around invisible with this clone that just stands there looking lost. <laughs> then suddenly this guy kills your AD carry, knocks you up, knocks your team up, knocks your wife up, and now you're raising a little baby solo queue player and wondering what went wrong. I have found a player who accidentally discovered an OP support pick that does not build a single support item, has the craziest mind games in the game, and he even has a secret tip that makes one of his damage abilities invisible. By the way, I just released merch, but I wanted to make it special, non-YouTuber merch with personality. They're all ethical, no sweatshop, environmentally friendly, please check it out at chimeshirts.com, link in the description. Our player today is named Two. Two discovered League of Legends in Season 3, already at 20 years old. He was not the kind of player to mess around in normal games, preferring competition, and immediately got into ranked as soon as he could. Well, this might not have been the best idea, because that season, 500 games later, he was still in silver. Even then, he was not discouraged, and kept playing. Around June 2013, the same year, he discovered Wukong, and the champion immediately clicked with him. It was like meeting his monkey soulmate. He started playing and actually shot up to diamond in his first season. Maybe there's a monkey soulmate out there for all of us. Wukong became his main, spamming him constantly. This guy was dedicated hundreds of games per season. He told me that he took a break from Wukong and tried out Rama's top lane during season 4 and 5, so I checked his match history, and apparently a Korean player's version of a break is playing over a thousand games of Wukong. Hey, whatever helps you relax, I guess. Season 6 and 7, once again, he told me he was too busy to really try hard in Lee, as he was focusing on his new job, paying the bills, climbing the corporate challenger ladder, but he still fit in 500 games and 800 games of Wukong in these years. Surprisingly, Wukong in Korea translates to Goku, and in Season 8 was when our player entered a new anime saga. Two really wanted a new peak rank. No longer on a break, he went straight back to his classic Wukong top lane. During this season, he ended up quite hard stuck, and able to progress above Diamond. Think about Korean master top laners. They're all insanely good, playing the meta champions, destroying the pre-rework Wukong. He had a solution, move to mid lane, play against players who had never never faced a Wukong in lane, and used this to gain an unfair advantage. By Season 9 this had worked, hitting Master for the first time. With Season 10 came the Wukong rework. The champion was completely broken and overpowered on release. Two spammed as many games as fast as he could before Riot could hotfix his boy. Wukong had now changed. From a one-shotting specialist, he now became more of a utility bruiser, so Two had to adapt. On one special day, while learning the new Wukong, something very strange happened. It was just like any other solo queue day. Two queued up, ready for maybe 5 or 6 games of his favourite top laner. He got in champ select, locked in, and prepared for his game. As the timer ticked down, and his teammates began to spam in the chat, he realised he made a mistake. He was also filled support, and he had locked in Wukong. He entered the game not really knowing what to do, but had to try and win. As the game went on, he realised that Wukong support actually had potential. Two saw the great CC on Wukong Ultimate, and he loved the mind games he could play with the clone to bait enemies. Maybe this game was the best mistake of his whole League of Legends career. From there he played it more and more. He had never finished the season in Master, but Wukong support was his ticket. And now in Season 11, with the new items, Wukong support has gotten a couple of extra tricks that have helped Two climb to Grandmaster. Even at 29 years old, this Wukong is still destroying the best Korean solo queue players. This pick is the new Shako support, the new mind game mental warfare specialist, who also now has one of the best engages in the game. In lane at level 1, Wukong does something weird in Korean solo queue. He does nothing. You would expect very high aggression and fighting from a Wukong at level 1. He loves going for first blood top lane and can beat almost any matchup, but bot lane is a different story. Two v2 Wukong needs to make a different play. Level 1 he has no escape. If he goes in, somebody's going to die. So 2 is patient, he waits, preparing for his first strategy. Level 2 Wukong takes his W. He now has an engage on his E and a disengage. Wukong W is very special in bot lane. As soon as 2 has it, enemies don't really know what to do. If Wukong goes in on the AD carry with his E, enemies need to react to it by returning damage. But 2 is already gone, already out, already safe. Enemies are just wasting damage on a clone. This is the first of many strategies that make Wukong support actually very good. Every time Wukong has W ready, he can go for this combo. But of course, that's not all. As a Wukong specialist, who has invented other ways to use the clone, and enemies literally cannot predict what's going to happen, no matter what rank they are, since there is no animation for Wukong W. It just looks like the character has stopped. Two uses this to his advantage. Doing a fake clone is one of the most annoying strategies to have to play against. Two walks forward and presses S. This makes his character stop in place, faking that his W has been used. Enemies must now try and predict where Wukong really is. High elo enemies assume that this is a clone, meaning they'll ignore it, and he can use that to surprise them. This guy can even block skill shots with it. Elise flashes in, yes this Elise is a good player even though he looks bronze. Seraphine ults the clone, yes this again apparently is a good player, but Wukong dodges it and wins the fight. Level 3 Wukong takes his Q and starts to max it. This is his main damage ability. An early game his base damage is really great, letting him kill AD carries 1v1 in many fights. Early fights are going to be a lot of auto-attacking. Engage with E, auto-attack, Q, auto-attack, then consider your options. 
If you're taking damage, use clone to avoid it. Reposition and then start DPSing again, igniting to finish the kill. If your AD carries AFK, just making friends with the minions, then you can always escape with clone instead to return to safety. Wukong does not need to get kills in lane, because support Wukong's biggest power spike in the whole game is at level 6. Unlocking his ultimate, he may just be the strongest support in the game. This champion does not need to scale, he can affect the game right away, which is perfect in solo queue, where early fights are so important. Wukong wants to start the fight as soon as possible, roaming and looking for any kills he can find. Look at this pick, for example, it really shows his power. He engages onto Galio, getting a knock-up and lots of damage. Meanwhile, he disrupts Caitlyn from helping. Back to Galio, second ult knocks Caitlyn up again, stopping her damage and killing Galio. There is nothing the enemy backline can do when Wukong is in the game. The normal weakness of this champion top lane is that since his ult is so good, he doesn't do as much crazy damage as other bruisers can. But as support, you have the same skills, the same CC, the same utility, and the same damage. But then you also have a top laner on your team who can do the extra damage you're missing. Wukong is not a support champion. If you pick this, enemies will not have played against it before. This is one of the biggest advantages you can have in a game. It is why Aurelian Soul players win games. Very few laners get enough experience to know how to beat them 1v1. It's a scary situation for an enemy AD carry to be in. There's a new champion in their lane. If they try and fight you, it's very possible they lose. But it's also very possible they win. There's no way for them to know until they try it. Ah Wukong has played thousands of games of support. He knows what happens if that AD carry goes in. He knows that AD carry is going to die. Even after a few games of Wukong support, you'll start to learn your power and your limits. With this knowledge, Wukong starts to roam, moving with his team to get picks, even going top lane very early on. If he joins a fight here, his team will win it. Wukong ultimate at level 6 is still balanced around top lane as damage. They don't have an item at level 6, so this needs to do a lot of damage. Comboed with smart play and damage from his E and Q, Wukong can take anyone on 1v1 from this point. Sometimes it might just be best to ignore your team and get a kill. You are a fifth carry after all. First item, Wukong also has a special weapon, Stridebreaker. It is no secret this item is OP. It has a very low cooldown and has made melee bruisers S tier this season. On Wukong it's even better. Think about Na. Season 10 he was pretty much trash. Not played much in pro play or solo queue. Now he's one of the most popular top laners in both, solely because it lets him extend his engage. Back to Wukong, he can do the exact same thing. Wukong ults to engage. He just needs to get in position to do it. Stridebreaker gives him that extra dash and slow to reach enemies every time. Na is good because he has one jump and stridebreaker. Wukong has his E dash and another dash on his W. So he can do what Na does, but go even further and then be invisible while doing it. As I mentioned, he doesn't buy any support items, Wukong is not a utility support, he's kind of a new support, a bruiser support. He needs damage, he needs mobility and tankiness. He protects people by making space for them to do their jobs, or even taking enemies out of the fight by himself to make it a 5 versus 4. Mid game, Wukong abuses Stridebreaker over and over again. If he's ahead, he just continuously looks for picks with his team. Objective control is another one of his specialties. Any fight you take with ult ready is going to be a winnable one. In team fights, Wukong has two very specific roles he can choose between. The first is Engage. Wukong is like a better version of Rel. He has a huge AoE ultimate and the ability to dive really far, so his Engage combo of E, W, Stridebreaker, Ult gets him right through the enemy team, all the way to the enemy backline. Wukong's goal is to cause chaos in the enemy formation, splitting their frontline and backline, as well as killing the enemy carry. Your ult does a lot of damage if you land the full channel, it's not just two knockups. From there Wukong tries to survive and return to his team, with enemies in full panic mode, no DPS left, no clue where the invisible monkey is. All they can do is run. Here's an engage fight. Wukong engages onto the enemy frontline, fully CCing them while his team focuses Alistar down for a free kill. Wukong then goes forward, engaging on backline, interrupting a dash with his ult, and guaranteeing another kill to win the fight. Engaging should be your goal most of the time. Wait for enemies to group up, and then catch them off guard with your high mobility. The other role Wukong has, quite unexpectedly, he can disengage. Wukong ult is an incredible engage stopper. He has two AoE knockups that can also be used by his clone, meaning he can disengage two areas at once. Think about this. An enemy champion engages, Wukong ults to stall them while going into the enemy backline to disrupt them as well. Now, with the clone ready, Wukong ults again, knocking up the enemy backline, stopping them from DPSing his team, and also once again disrupting the enemy engage. This completely splits up the enemy team, making their backline too scared to walk in, which means enemies won't have enough damage to win a fight. Wukong can then chase them with his team afterwards. The fight is already won. Sometimes a Wukong can even do both at the same time. He can disengage an enemy, get a kill, and then engage for his team. Earlier I mentioned a really crazy Wukong tip, making one of your abilities invisible. 
Ball. Tu told me a little Wukong secret which he uses all the time. Wukong Q, his highest damage spammable ability, can actually become invisible once again using your S key. The way this works is Wukong uses Q and walks up to auto attack. Pressing S immediately as you get in range instantly cancels the animation. Enemies still take full damage but have no idea what just hit them. This seems insignificant. But Wukong Q is also an auto attack reset, meaning you can auto attack then use invisible Q very fast for huge damage. Enemy carries will assume, oh it's just to support Wukong. I can kite him, he doesn't do much damage. Then boom, engages on them with ult. Auto attack, invisible Q, and they're dead. Wukong support is also an incredibly good champion to go with fasting Senna. Supports take the CS, Senna gets more souls, which thus gives him more gold value. The most common combo is Tom Kench, or other support champions who really don't use the extra gold they get very efficiently. But Wukong, he's a champion that can farm safely in lane, disengage with W if needed, he can engage himself, and he can use the gold very well compared to these real supports. He can just go for a damage build, and then it's like having 5 carries on your team. Two bans Thresh every game, Wukong can win this matchup, but if he gets hooked, his mind games are not that relevant, and he might just die. He also cannot really protect his AD carry from the hooks without using clone constantly, which can waste mana. He takes ignite and flash always, you are the aggressor, looking for kills, and the ignite gives you the damage you need to win 1v1s. For his special support build, two starts steel shoulder guards, the AD support item. Immediately first he rushes boots, going for Ionian boots for the extra ability haste, it's great with Wukong ult for more plays, and also great for his basic abilities, to allow him to escape more bad situations and trick more enemies. His first item that he recommends every game is Stridebreaker. It is vital for your engage and there is no other item that is even close. After this, Tu's build becomes situational. He often goes for anti-healing, even finishing Kempunk Chainsword fully, to be the utility for his team. This is great for damage, but it's so good because it spreads anti-heal on all five enemies when he ults, and then it helps him win 1v1s in the backline. Hex Drinker is also a good option against lots of AP. Korean games are fast and end quickly, so Tu buys lots of control wards and should win the game with just these items. For his runes he has two options. Always go Conqueror. It's perfect for Wukong in fights with his ult. He stacks it fast and heals. His secondaries are where you can make a choice. He takes inspiration with biscuits, cosmic insight. If he has support, this lets him engage, take poke and heal back up. If he's playing fasting or AD carry Wukong, he takes resolve for an easier time getting CS and more safety in fights. I'm testing this on Twitch right now so come watch. Subscribe if you enjoyed, new off meta video every Friday. To check out the t-shirts in the description, there's even one where all the profits go to charity. Thanks so much for watching.